In this video, we're going to talk about some severe weather in the northeast today. The Storm Prediction Center has issued an enhanced risk with a 30% chance of damaging winds. Also, we are still watching the tropics as things just keep popping up and some of the latest model runs look pretty concerning. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. I'm glad you're here. If you like hearing about the weather, if you like staying up to date, buddy, uh, are you going to like this episode because we got a lot to talk about. It feels like this year has just been weather gone wild. I mean, like every single season we have something intense happening and it doesn't look like it's gonna stop anytime soon. So here's a big old look at the United States of America. As you can see, we got a little cold front going on here all the way from Quebec down into Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. We've got a big old line of showers and the occasional rumble of thunder moving through all these areas. And uh, this, you know, cold front, this area, this boundary is going to cause some severe weather later today in the Northeast. And as far as on land today, that's going to be our main story. And we're going to talk about that here in a second, but we also have to talk about the tropics. I mean, look at this, man. This is not your average average, you know, June 30th uh, look at the National Hurricane Center tracks. We have two tropical depressions, two invested areas of interest uh, in the Atlantic Ocean right now, uh, and both of them are long lived. They've came off the coast of Africa and they are heading towards uh, the United States. Now we've got Invest 95L here with a central pressure of 1,011 millibars, uh, maximum wind speed of 34 miles an hour. That one's a tropical depression right now, okay? But I think we don't have to worry about this one. Okay, this one's going to get eaten up. It's going to get flung off to the north, and it's not going to affect the United States in the way uh, that the other one has the opportunity to. Okay, even though it's closer uh, to the United States right now. If we go back here, way back here, we've got Invest 97L. Okay, this one right here's got a central pressure of 1,009 millibars. It's weaker right now, but it has more time to increase in strength. And I, I just believe a lot of the models are showing this uh, coming right here into the Caribbean. And then eventually, uh, you know, a lot of them show them turning up across Cuba into western parts of Florida. And some of the models are showing this making landfall right now as possibly a pretty significant hurricane. So uh, we're going to watch that closely. Uh, as, as you guys know, you know, it's tropical season. We're going to constantly look at potential tropical cyclones that eventually just fizzle out. OK, uh, but one of these days, one of these is going to root and, and hold true and actually make landfall. So I'm going to be here. I'm going to be talking about all of them, okay? And I want to let it be known that I, I'm not saying that there's going to be a big hurricane hit Florida right now. We're looking at all the possibilities, and that is one of them. But before we get into the nitty-gritty of the tropical system, let's take a look at that severe weather today up in the northeast. Let's look at the weather models for that. All right, here's a look at the east coast on the old trusty HRRR high-resolution rapid refresh model. You can hear my voice is a little different today. I've been... <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I've been sick. Uh, that's one of the reasons I haven't been uploading the past couple of days. I'm sorry about that. I feel like I always have some stupid excuse, but like yesterday and the day before that, like I, I, you literally wouldn't be able to understand me at all. So uh, I'm feeling better now. And now uh, we're going to start posting consistently here on this channel. Okay. All right. Anyways, here's a look at that HRRR model. Let's take a look at the severe weather possibilities today in the Northeast. Now, uh, specifically uh, up here in Massachusetts, we're looking at the possibility for uh, possibly some, you know, a pretty strong damage winds. We're looking for some of these storms along with the cold front today to kind of bow out and create bow echoes and, and create straight line damaging winds as they move through the state. Uh, but everybody on the East Coast uh, that gets affected by this cold front up here is going to have some sort of weather today, uh, whether that's, you know, just some rain or uh, your garden variety thunderstorm or what have you. Uh, but I think the number one area we've got to watch is right over here on the Northeast Coast, uh, specifically in Massachusetts. And I'll show you why. Let's put this forward into motion. Here we are at three p.m. today by the way if you want to keep up with the date and time right there it is uh, 3 p.m. today we got storms going up here we got storms going up there we got storms going up everywhere uh, including in central Ohio okay the, the, some of the latest runs of uh, these models have shown that some of these storms are looking a little bit more uh, significant in Ohio and western Pennsylvania northern West Virginia okay uh, now you guys are just under a marginal risk for severe weather right now uh, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be concerned about this okay these storms could definitely drop at a significant significant amount of rain in a short period of time, maybe have some cloud to ground lightning, small hail here and there. And also that wind threat is also existent uh, here in this area right here uh, from Columbus uh, down towards Morgantown, uh, towards Pittsburgh. Okay. 
uh, maybe even as far east as Williamsport in uh, Pennsylvania. I do think that some of these storms could get a little gnarly today. Not everybody's going to get a big storm, but watch out for it. Uh, the target area, the main area we're watching once again is up here in upstate New York into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, uh, parts of Connecticut and Rhode Island. And let's watch these storms as they move through there. Uh, as you can see, we've got this cold front coming through and it's attached to a low pressure system that you can't see here on this map. But the kinematics and the way that this storm is moving, the motion factors, the physics is driving this northern part of this uh, cold front much faster than the, uh, the southern part. In fact, this uh, part of the front down here has almost become stationary as we have an area of warm air and cold air right here. This part of the cold front's got getting it out of this way. This part right here is just kind of waiting on this part to do its thing while it kind of just meanders around down here. Now this will eventually move off to the south and east, uh, but this part is moving much faster. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase helicity rates. It's going to interact with that lower level jet stream more. Uh, so up here in Maine and uh, Vermont specifically, I do think we have a pretty slight tornado risk today. You're right there along the axis of that low pressure system where I think that uh, uh, there's a pretty good chance of seeing some storm relative helicity. And then right here south of that a little bit, there's going to be enough forward motion from the cold front and also enough cold air behind the storms pushing them forward uh, that I do believe that we are going to have uh, some problems with straight line damaging winds. Check this out. Here we are around you know 5 to 8 p.m. today. That's when these storms are going to be moving through Massachusetts and that's when we could possibly see those really strong storms. Even in Boston, around 9 p.m. tonight. Look out for a big bow echo of storms, uh, possibly causing some damage uh, uh, across the area tonight as we go forward, okay? And as you can see, we've just got a bunch of leftover rain showers and stuff uh, at 1 a.m. tonight on July 1st, by the way. Happy July, everybody. And this is, once again, just that lingering cold front that's gonna be kind of sticking around with us for a little while and bringing us some more rain tomorrow. Look at this. Everybody's just kind of getting all wet here from Pennsylvania down into West Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, uh, Missouri, some of these rain showers in the areas where you see, you know, the, the reflectivity is a little bit more intense will be heavy at times, okay? You got to think uh, this cold front is interacting with a very strong uh, moisture inflow uh, from the Gulf of Mexico, okay? So uh, if, you're, if you're on the front edge of that cold front and you get a little storm, it's going to rain, so it's going to be a gully washer out there. All right, here we are, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4 tomorrow. Look here, we're going to have more storms uh, as that cold front does, you know, kind of snail off to the south and east. I think tomorrow, the main threats probably going to be right in here as you can see we got some more significant storms popping up in western i'm sorry in eastern west virginia much of maryland southeastern pennsylvania south jersey delaware the delmarva peninsula uh, maybe even parts of eastern virginia as well uh, getting in on uh, this little uh, line of storms right here as that pushes through once again uh, uh, you know straight line damaging winds being the main threat here but actually that doesn't look as significant as today's storms so i don't know if we'll see a slight risk from that or i, I especially don't think we'll see an enhanced risk so um, yeah, that's that. That's what the storm's looking like, son. Places that need to watch out for isolated flooding today uh, are right along where that uh, that boundary is going to be stationary for a little while here in Ohio and Indiana and even back towards Missouri, okay? You see these isolated pockets here where some people could maybe see five, six, seven, eight inches of rain in a very short amount of time. I like to show this in situations like this because, you know, even though we're not seeing a widespread area that's going to see, uh, you know, a ton of rain, in situations like this that are often overlooked in flash flooding uh, forecasting, because I promise you somebody out here in the Ohio Valley or uh, the, the Midwestern areas that are affected by the stationary boundary are gonna have significant flooding probably flooding that you'll remember for a very long time, uh, but it's just going to be so isolated and random. It won't make the national news. You won't hear about it. Uh, but if you're watching my video right now, I want you to know, hey, you know, if you live in a flood prone area out here in uh, South Central Ohio, maybe Southeastern Indiana, uh, through much of Central Illinois, Northern Missouri, uh, you know, just don't freak out, but be prepared. Some heavy rain's coming, all right? All right, now let's talk about this uh, potential tropical cyclone uh, that may affect the United States. You know, it'll be a while before it gets here, uh, but this one right here is probably the most promising one that I've seen uh, so far this year. Uh, so let me show you. This is the uh, HMON 97L uh, Invest. This is, basically, this is just going to show us what the formation of this uh, tropical uh, cyclone is going to look like as the model follows it across the ocean, okay? Uh, so this is the composite reflectivity. This is you know kind of what the radar would look like if we had a radar out there. Uh, and watch how quickly this thing becomes organized, okay? Here we are 
on Thursday, July 1st at 11 a.m. We've already got a well-defined eye wall on this storm. According to this model, we have a lot of feeder bands going into the storm. The northeastern quadrant of the storm does look like it's starting to intensify enough to maybe have winds strong enough uh, to classify it as a tropical storm or higher. And then as I push this further on in, you can see it maintains its strength and pretty soon here, we're gonna start seeing land. Yeah, here we go. Right there's Puerto Rico, all right? Uh, we've got the Dominican Republic and Haiti up here. And as you can see, this is going south of the islands. And uh, actually, that's kind of like a worst case scenario. You don't wanna see that. A lot of people take the uh, Caribbean and the islands down there for granted because they act as a shield for Florida and the Gulf of Mexico a lot of times, uh, kind of you know tearing up these storms before it comes in. But there's a little channel, there's a little path uh, that these storms can take right in between some of these islands that will allow them to maintain their strength and here's this one passing just to the south uh, port of prince some of the outer bands will reach there in southern haiti and then it looks to me according to this model this storm's going to uh, try to make landfall or just skirt off just to the north of jamaica and that's the path that i'm talking about okay if this can uh, maintain its strength and just kind of skid over uh, jamaica stay in between cuba and jamaica ride the southern portion of cuba maybe cross it on the western half and then go up into the gulf of mexico this thing's going to take the path of least resistance it's going to allow it to increase in strength substantially okay so that's what it looks like all the way up until uh, it gets to Jamaica and then this model kind of stops following it as it goes on up into the Gulf of Mexico. So, uh, you know, this isn't the only model we're gonna look at today, but I just wanted to show you this because it's kind of fun to look at and this is just one model, but that's the path uh, that it's showing right now. If we look at some of the 850 millibar rotation speeds on here, you can tell that that's a really strong uh, wind speeds, especially in the lower level jet stream, uh, you know, packet of the uh, the atmosphere up there uh, on the northeastern quadrant that's what you see and an intensifying uh, you know tropical storm or hurricane so let's take a look at this from a couple different angles now okay so now we're looking at the GFS ensembles uh, potential tracks for this storm and as you can see all the way up until the storm gets about right here we're pretty sure exactly what's going to happen with it okay it's going to approach to the north and west at a pretty consistent speed and then right around when it gets to uh, Puerto Rico or south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic uh, that's when things start to go you know it's like who, who knows what's going to happen some of these models show it going up here some of them say it's going to go straight on into the yucatan peninsula uh, but a lot of them show them this storm taking that path of least resistance like i was talking about making it into the gulf of mexico and eventually affecting florida that's the worst case scenario here okay remember if this storm tracks across these islands it's going to weaken enough to where we really probably won't have to worry about it that much so so that's what all of the models are showing right now as possible outcomes now the line here with the little triangles on it the purple one that's the most likely scenario all right so now let's take a look at the uh, gfs deterministic model and let's track this thing out here's invest 97l at this point on july 1st uh tomorrow this may uh, already be a named storm okay and we're gonna watch this wave go all the way up once again uh south of puerto rico and this is actually showing it becoming really close to uh, the dominican republic okay so uh the other model that we just looked at was a little bit further south this one's a little bit further north north as you can tell right around this area is where we're going to start to see a lot of disagreement and as we zoom in here you can see that this storm is going to it's going to go right over cuba you can see the weakening already happening here on july 4th okay now this is still going to be a pretty strong storm uh, for the port au prince area there in haiti and also in southern areas of cuba uh, but thankfully the vast majority of the you know intensity and the forward momentum that this storm had is going to be completely wrecked uh, if it actually crosses across the mountainous regions of these islands like this but uh, there is enough energy there in the gulf of mexico if it stays over at water for long enough for this to re-intensify into a pretty significant hurricane as it makes its landfall right there in florida and look at that once again, pretty significant hurricane here, category one, two, three, maybe. And then from there, it does continue to go, you know, on up the East Coast. So, you know, this is a pretty close uh, representation of what could happen with this storm uh, compared to the other models that we've looked at. You got to understand an overall shift just to the north with the storm will overall make this storm weaker when it makes landfall. And an overall shift just to the south, if it takes that path of least resistance, could turn this into um, a much more significant storm that we have to be very worried about. Okay. So, that's all I want to say right now. Tomorrow, the models are going to be completely different. And as long as I can, I'm, <laughs> as long as you guys aren't too annoyed by my... <laughs> 
uh, you know, deathly ill sound here. I'm going to make another video and, and I'm probably not as high energy as I usually am, but like we need to talk about this. Okay. Uh, so if tomorrow things are still looking pretty concerning, I'm going to make another video. And if you guys have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments. Okay. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. I'm going to go eat chicken noodle soup or something. I don't know. Like I've never been sick in the summer before. This sucks. I have been tested for all the, the, uh, you know, the scary ones, it's not, it's not like pneumonia, it's not COVID, it's not the flu, it's just something, something random, I don't know. I really do appreciate you guys for sticking around here. Um, uh, I, I promise eventually we're going to get to a place where I'm uploading consistently. Uh, <laughs> you guys know, it's been crazy. So thank you for sticking with me. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.